All right, so now I'm just going to finish up. So this is just, again, doing more examples of working with large numbers, doing some conversions, and talking about percentages um, in the 1.5 notes. So again, make sure you do look at these. These are very similar to what you'll see in the homework and very similar to what you'll see in the exams and quizzes. All right, so the next example is another population example. Suppose we know the population of India is Indiana, not India. Indiana is 6.7 million people. All right, the population of Indianapolis, Indiana, so the, the city, is 838,000 people. Uh, the population of the city of Indianapolis represent what percentage of the state? So we want to know, out of all of the people in the state of Indiana, what percent live in Indianapolis? Well, whenever you're taking a percent, it's always the part you're interested in, the part of the population, which would be the people in Indianapolis, divided by the total, the total amount. And then we want a percent, so the last thing is you're going to do is you're going to multiply by 100% to put it, because this will give me a decimal, the, the fraction will give me a decimal, and I want to put it in a percent, so you're going to multiply by 100%, so it puts me in the percent. All right, so in this case, and the, we have to take care of the million, so make sure you remember we're not going to take, so the population of Indianapolis, which is the 838,000 people in this city, divided by the entire state population, which would be 6.7 million. So remember, when we write the 6 point, we're not gonna divide by 6.7. We're gonna divide by 6.7 million. Remember, million is represented by 10 to the sixth, right? We need to take that number times 10 to the sixth to put it in millions. And then the last thing we're gonna do is multiply by our 100 to put it into a percent. All right, so you do the fraction first, you take your 838,000 divided by your 6.7 times 10 to the 6, your 6.7 million people in the population. And then the last thing you're going to do, so I usually do the fraction first, and then the last thing I do is multiply by the percentage, by the, the 100 to get it into a percent. All right, so when you multiply this out, it comes out to be 0 0.0125, and then take that times 100, so it comes out 1.25%. So that means... 1.25% of the people in Indiana live in Indianapolis. Right, live in the city Indianapolis. Right, next example. Suppose the population of France is 67.2 million people. So remember that's in millions. The area of Paris, all right, so the city Paris, occupies about 40.7 square miles. All right, so that's how big Paris is. If every person in France moved to Paris, how many square feet, ah, I have to go to square feet, as we start off in miles, would each person have? All right. <clears throat> So we're going to convert to feet. And I'm actually going to do this one all in one. So it's kind of putting it all together, looking with large numbers and doing our conversion. So remember, one foot is 500, 500, I keep wanting to say 500, 5,280. Sorry, not one foot. I'll do the whole thing wrong. One mile is equal to 500, 5,280. All right. All right. One mile is equal to 5,280 feet. So we want to figure out how much space everybody in France would occupy if they all moved to Paris. All right. So what you're going to have to do, and the first thing you have to figure out, what, what do, how do I divide? I want to take the miles in Paris and put people into it. And so when you're going to do the division, you're going to take the square miles divided by the total 
population. That's how you want to set it up. And then we'll convert to the feet. Now I'm actually going to do it all in one shot in this case. All right, so we start off with our miles. So we have 400.7 miles squared of space. We're going to fit 67.2 million. So I've got to remember it's not 67.2. It's 67.2 times 10 to the 6 to put it in millions. All right, that's the people. All right, if you did that division, it would tell you how many miles it would occupy, but it actually ends up being a fairly small number. All right, so that's the miles of people. That's how many miles the people would have to live in. But I'm going to go ahead and convert it to feet. All right, so I want to get feet per person, feet squared per person. All right, so I need to get rid of my miles. Well, remember, feet squared, I need to get rid of two miles. So when I set this up, I need two of these or the square of them. So for every one mile, that's 5,280. And I did it backwards, right? I need my feet up top, my miles in the bottom. So 5,280 feet divided by one mile. Remember, that's just one mile. So I still have an, another one I have to do because I want to cancel out both of the miles. So I get another mile another 5,280 feet. So that'll give me my feet squared. I get rid of all of my miles. So now up top I will be left with the number of feet squared they have to occupy. And then divide by the number of people. All right, so it's up to you how you want to do this. You can do the multiplication first and then the division. You can do it all in one whack. Just make sure you're careful on how you do this on your calculator. But basically what you have to do is you have to take your 40.7 times your 5280 times another 5280 that whole thing divided by the 72.2 but in millions so 72.2 times 10 to the sixth that's what you have to type out on your calculator so make sure you're very very careful and type it out very very carefully and you get 16.88 or roughly 17 feet they're not a lot of space. So if everybody in France moved to Paris, it really wouldn't be feasible because everybody would only have 17 square feet. That'd be a very small space. 17 square feet. That'd be, you know, if you take a 17 square foot rug, would be very, very small. All right, very, very small space. All right, next example. This one's kind of an important example. Because uh, it puts us into kind of figuring out budgets and things. All right, suppose that I plan a road trip, and I know the total distance for the trip is 2,405 miles. I know my car averages, and again, most cars will tell you this anymore, at least you can look it up, 29 miles per gallon of gasoline. So for every 25, 29 miles, I use up a gallon of gas. I have learned the cost of gas. So this is, again, a dated problem. This is from a couple years ago. Uh, gasoline is a lot more expensive now. All right, but we'll leave it as it is in the problem. So we'll suppose this was a few years ago when I planned my trip. Gas costs $1.95 per gallon. All right, find the exact amount of money you would spend on the trip on gasoline. All right, so first of all, we'll start off with how far we're traveling. We're traveling, so this is where units are important. Use your units. I want to end up with dollars. That's what I want to end up with, the amount I'm going to spend which means I need to get rid of gallons and I need to get rid of miles. So we start off with our trip. 2,405 miles is how far we're gonna travel. Well, my car averages 29 for every one gallon of gas. All right, so that's what that means. That means for one gallon of gas, that equals 29 miles travel. All right, so when I set this up, I wanna get rid of miles, so we're going to travel 29 miles. And when we travel each 29 miles, we're going to use up one gallon of gas. So this first multiplication is going to tell me how many gallons of gas that I'm going to use, right? Because miles cancel out. And then I'll, I'll know how many gallons of gas that I need for my trip. So I take my 2,405 divided by 29. So my 2,405 divided by my 29 and again, it comes out to 82.931 and some decimals. All right, so that would be the gallons 
of gas needed. All right, well, I know how much a gallon of gas is. A gallon of gas is $1 for every gallon. And so I take my 82.931 gallons and multiply it by my dollars, $1.95 per gallon. All right, gallons will cancel out, and the last number standing will be in dollars. So I'm actually going to take the previous answer that was in my calculator so I don't round, because remember, we don't really want to round until the end of the problem. And so when I do, and I multiply that out, it comes out to $161, and I'm going to round to the penny, 72 cents. All right, that's how much the total trip just paying for gas will cost me. All right, so that's exactly. Now, what if we just wanted to ballpark it, which is probably what most of us would try to do, right? Most of us would estimate to ballpark it. And so let's do the same problem, but instead of finding the exact using this, the numbers that we have, let's do an approximation. And when we approximate, what you want to do is you kind of round your numbers to nicer numbers to work with. So instead of saying we're going to travel 2,405 miles, let's estimate to 2,400 miles. All right? Instead of saying my gas is, my car gets 29, well, let's round to 30 miles per gallon. And instead of $2.95, let's say we're going to just round up to $2 per gallon. All right, and do the same problem. And so what we're going to, first thing we're going to do is we're going to start off with our miles. Divide that out by 30. That takes me, right, that would be my miles. That's my miles per gallon. And so that's going to leave me with how many gallons, all right? Which, again, you can actually do this one without a calculator. The zeros cancel out. Uh, divides into gives me 80 gallons. All right, 3 goes into 24, or 240, 80 times. So I'm going to use 80 gallons of gas. Each of those gallons of gas is going to cost me about $2. So I take my 80 gallons times my estimated $2. And that means it's going to take me approximately $160 in gas, All right, which is a pretty good estimate. If I, I mean, I would probably round that anyway if I were talking to a friend. Well, it's going to cost me, I wouldn't say it's going to cost me $161.72 in gas. I would probably say, eh, it's going to cost me about $160 in gas, right? That's how most of us would talk if we're doing it. So sometimes it's helpful to estimate stuff, all right? And if you do a fairly good job, estimating a lot of times just means making numbers that are a little easier to work with. All right, so that finishes up our 1.5 notes. So do make sure that you understand that. And if you've got questions, uh, please ask them in the forum. So we'll stop there.